So I thought I'd start by giving some context on the kinds of uh, research and teaching that I do, and maybe um, because I'm going to be referring to some of this work later on uh, in the talk. So I um, work quite widely across uh, sociology, media and cultural studies, and feminist theory on uh, topics including uh, visual and sensory culture, um, with a particular interest in contemporary media culture. Uh, I also work on bodies and the body, and uh, in the area of uh, new materialisms, which I think some of you are, are interested in, and that's what I'm going to um, mainly talk about today. I think more uh, uh, kind of recently, I've also been working on uh, temporality, so uh, ideas about the future um, and how we might study the future. So also developing methodologies around the future, um, and I kind of uh, draw on new materialisms, um, affect studies, um, and arts-based approaches to kind of to do this. And I'll, I'll talk about some of this later on. It's okay. It's okay. So um, uh, I've done research with teenage girls about how they experience their bodies through images and, and visual culture, and also research on um, self-transformation uh, and how this involves um, the body, so how um, the idea of a, a better future or a better self is often kind of worked through in terms of improving or making changes to the body. And I've um, developed uh, methodologies from uh, the, the philosophy of, of Gilles Deleuze. Um, so um, that's kind of one of my main influences and one of my roots to uh, new materialisms as well as feminist work on the body. I'm currently researching um, digital media culture and thinking about the present, so the, the now. Um, and affect, and I'm also researching um, glitter, uh, glitter and uh, femininity, and uh, uh, LGBTQ um, or, or kind of gay and, and queer politics. So that's my current uh, research, but also my my research trajectory, and I think where I intersect with the research that's being done here on on the body, on visual culture, on media culture. Okay, so today what I'm going to do is talk about working with bodies and images, um, primarily theoretically, so it's, a, it's mainly through a theoretical um, talk. And I'm going to give a, a brief and partial feminist history of the, the way in which feminism has approached um, bodies and images and the relations between them. And I'm going to think about the uh, dominant way in which theorising bodies and images have been uh, understood in terms of uh, a linguistic or a discursive approach to images. And I'm going to then introduce the new materialisms and some key ideas from the new materialisms and how this might approach uh, bodies and images in a, in a different way. So I'm going to kind of set up what I think is a dominant way in which bodies and images have been understood and then uh, introduce or offer a new materialist approach instead. And I'm going to give some examples that come from my own research about how we might think about um, uh, what this approach might do, what it might open up. So um, there's a long history of studying bodies and images in um, feminism and uh, feminist theory. So we can think about theories of the male gaze, for example, and women's spectatorship of images, so how women look at images. So some references here, um, primarily um, from the UK, that think about how women are positioned in relation to film, art, photography, mirror images, and popular culture more widely. So if we think about visual culture, feminism has, has kind of long been interested in this idea of um, uh, the, the relations between bodies, women's bodies and images. 
There's also a lot of, um, at least uh, in the UK and America, and, and Australia, I would say, empirical research, so sociological work and, and um, psychological work on um, girls and young women, and mainstream media images. So a lot of this research focuses on media images and, and tries to kind of think about how um, young women are positioned in relation to media images. Um, and what kinds of effects or impacts um, media images have on, on bodies. There's also a kind of a growing move from around 2000 um, in uh, commercial uh, culture and uh, consumer culture um, to think about the body, women's body. So um, in the UK we have um, the Dove a body confidence campaign. I'm not sure if you have that here or two. So the idea that um, uh, adverts uh, need to include a diversity of, of women's bodies and we kind of need to move away from a, a standard uh, idea of, of what is beautiful and kind of to try to um, uh, kind of uh, increase body confidence. And there's also been uh, a lot of work uh, in the UK from, from government. So in 2000, um, the UK government held a body image summit where um, academics, um, uh, psychologists, uh, fashion designers, people working in advertising were brought together to, to think about this, um, uh, these ideas. And um, from there, uh, a body confidence advisory group um, emerged that has been going into the last few years. I'm not sure how successful um, these initiatives are, but I think that they indicate um, uh, a, a kind of a need to think about these kinds of ideas. And increasingly, um, we see activism around these ideas as well. So, these are some images from um, uh, 2015, I think, or 2016, when um, a weight loss company um, launched a campaign uh, saying, are you beach body ready? Which was basically um, uh, uh, advertising their products to help women lose weight. And uh, an activist, uh, activism kind of emerged around this where um, people wrote on the posters um, saying, well, if I'm on a beach, my body is beach ready, or, you know, I, I don't need to do anything in order to change my body. Um, and at festivals, um, uh, women and some men as well were kind of trying to trouble this idea of the, the perfect beach body. So, I think kind of what we can take from this is both that um, this topic has been um, kind of important within feminism, but also I think what feminism has tried to do is to think about how women are positioned not only as subjects, but also as objects. So I think one of, for me, one of the interesting um, theoretical kind of points that has been made is that women, because of these kinds of representations, are made into or they become images. So there's a kind of blurring between um, women's bodies and images. Women are never purely subjects, but they're also objects of the gaze, for example. So from um, Simone de Beauvoir, um, whose book The Second Sex was published in 1949, she writes here about mirror images. And she says, Woman, knowing and making herself object, believes she really sees herself in the glass. And she gives life through her admiration and desire to the imagined qualities she sees. Her writing on film, Marianne Duran argues that for the female spectator there is a certain over-presence of the image. She is the image. And so she talks about how the female look demands a becoming. So this, this blurring of the boundary between the body and the image, I think, is, is really interesting. And also, the way in which 
uh, women kind of make themselves into images, they become images. So I think there's some really interesting theoretical work um, that for me uh, is a way into thinking about new materialisms and I'll, I'll talk more about that uh, later on. But I want to think a bit more about how the relations between bodies and images tend to be analysed. And I think we can kind of um, unpack how uh, the linguistic or a discursive approach to images and bodies is, is kind of really dominant. And this is, uh, uh, can be kind of grounded within um, the structuralist move from the 1950s on. And for our purposes here, we can think about how um, this linguistic or discursive term is interested in language and in how language communicates meaning. So the idea that language is a, a kind of a sign system and that it is through language that our access to the world is constructed. And I think this is what uh, the post-structuralist move from the 1980s um, uh, really draws attention to. So there's no such thing as a kind of a real or a core meaning, but meaning is always produced through language. So we can think about Derrida's work um, or um, the really important work by Stuart Hall. So we can then think about how uh, images function as language and I, I think this is a, a really major way in which images and visual culture more generally are, are, are kind of approached and understood. So images are seen as encoded signs and we need to analyse them in order to decode their meaning. So a semiotic approach to images, to, to adverts, for example. So Stuart Hall argues that we construct meaning using representational systems, concepts and signs. And I'm going to read this quote out from him and I will return to it later on. But Hall argues that we must not confuse the material world, where things and people exist, and the symbolic practices and processes through which representation, meaning and language operate. So constructivists do not deny the existence of the material world, however it is not the material world which conveys meaning. It is the language system or whatever system we are using to represent our concepts. And he says it is social actors who use the conceptual systems of their cultures and the linguistic and other representational systems to construct meaning, to make the world meaningful and to communicate about that world meaningfully to others. So I think what's important to note here is that Hall is arguing that there is a material world which exists, is real, and then there is the symbolic world. So it's the language system that gives us access to the material world. It is only through language that we can access and make sense of materiality. And this work we might also, um, or, or this kind of approach to um, the body can also be identified in some of Michel Foucault's work. So the idea of the docile body, for example, where the body is the inscribed surface of events traced by language and dissolved by ideas. And Susan Bordeaux, who wrote about um, um, uh, the body and kind of weight and visual culture, talks about how our bodies are constituted by culture. So visual culture is teaching us what to expect from flesh and blood, training our perception of what's a defect and what is normal. So I think from the, in, in the kind of 1990s and 2000s, this, um, 
discursive or linguistic approach to images and the body was really dominant and that this has given us a particular way of understanding and analysing bodies and images. So images are representations. Representations are cultural, they are language, whereas bodies are natural and are then kind of constituted or shaped or inscribed by culture. So we have images and bodies and they're kind of made of different stuff. And representations are read. So if you think about semiotics, that's an approach where we read and we decode images to find the meaning of the image. So the theorist stands outside of the representation that they are analysing. So I'll come back to some of these ideas um, uh, about the image and the body, but I wanted to um, introduce some key ideas from new materialisms in order to begin to kind of lay out this alternative approach to how we might think about bodies and images. So um, some key ideas from new materialisms, uh, we can find them in a, a, a collection by um, Kuhl and Frost, who argue that um, material uh, factors and our understanding of matter are what are, are foregrounded in the new materialisms. And they talk about how this is necessarily an interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary approach. So, as a sociologist, I might need to look outside of sociology um, uh, to think about how we might understand matter. They also talk about matter in terms of materialisation. So materialisation is a complex, pluralistic, open process that humans, including theorists themselves, be recognised as thoroughly immersed within materiality's productive contingencies. So matter, or materiality, is always something more than mere matter. Materiality is an excess, force, vitality, relationality or difference where matter is active, self-creative, productive and unpredictable. So this is an argument about, um, well, there's many different points that they're making here. But matter isn't a blank slate or a surface that is inscribed upon. Matter is itself active, vibrant, it's productive. So we need to think about the body as this active materiality. It's not this blank slate that is inscribed upon by culture, but the body itself um, has agency. Mm -hmm. We also um, here need to think about ourselves as theorists or researchers and kind of see ourselves as placed within what it is we are trying to study. So it's not that we can stand outside and read the image, for example. And this argument that matter becomes rather than matter is. So the idea that if matter or materiality is productive, if it's active, it means it's changing, it's always kind of in process. And so I think we can think about this, these new materialist um, ideas as emerging at least in part from the long history of feminist and, and class theory as well. So if we think about the idea that um, uh, images uh, and women's position in relation to them um, uh, require a becoming, you know, we can think about this kind of dynamism or this change in relation to new materialism. 
So Marion Fraser talks about how feminist theory is a natural place to begin to think through these issues, especially given its historical interest and investment in bodies, nature and ontology. Eleno and Heckman kind of go further and argue that feminist new materialism is a new paradigm for feminist thought. It's a new wave of feminist thought that is taking matters seriously. And perhaps unsurprisingly, um, there are critiques of feminist new materialisms, and particularly this idea of it being new. So you can see Sarah Ahmed's work um, from 2008 that, that kind of critiques um, uh, this approach, and um, uh, Nikki Sullivan's work as well. I've included some references at the end of the, the slides as well, so um, uh, these are both referenced there. And there's also increasing uh, critiques of the new materialisms uh, for being kind of white, very white, and um, very Euro-American and centric as well. So there's a yeah, but there are there are different critiques uh, kind of emerging within um, feminist new materialisms. Some of the these these key ideas from the new materialisms then are around matter as encompassing the stuff or substance of all things. So Stacey Elena talks about how matter is the vast stuff of the world and of ourselves. So matter cuts across nature culture, human, non-human, mind, body, object, subject, animate and inanimate. So for us, if we're interested in the body and images then, we might think about both images and the body in terms of matter. Donna Haraway's kind of long-standing work, which troubles boundaries between nature, culture, and the material and semiotic, um, uh, is helpful here. And to think about how the human is always kind of entangled with a wider environment or ecology, and how this environment or ecology is always entangled with the human. So matter has agency, as I said, it acts, it's lively, it has a life. And there's a challenge then to thinking about representationalism. So Elena and Heckman are critical of the postmodern or post-structuralist focus on how language is seen as constitutive of the body or of the material. So they kind of um, they identify this kind of tendency within post-structuralism and postmodernism that sees the real or material as entirely constituted by language, and they argue what. Uh, so they say that this is that what we call the real is a product of language and has its reality only in language. <coughs> and they argue and this is the the last quotation here, that focusing exclusively on representations, ideology and discourse excludes lived experience, corporal practice and biological substance. So if we go back to that quotation from Stuart Hall, where there's a material and symbolic world and it is the symbolic or uh, the linguistic world that gives us access to the material world, that kind of understands images in terms of representations to be decoded. I think this is one of the things that a new materialist approach um, is kind of troubled by or tries to do something different to. So in understanding matter as cutting across binaries between bodies and images, and as seeing matter as itself kind of lively or having a life, this idea that the material world is only accessed through language doesn't, doesn't kind of work. Instead, the idea that humans, the human body and visual culture, bodies and images are entangled, they're intertwined, they're enmeshed. So we might ask, where does the body end and the image begin? 
if humans are not outside of visual culture, but they're kind of enmeshed within it, if the body is kind of, um, or, or if, if, if the lines between the body and image are understood as kind of blurred or understood in terms of this kind of active materiality, how do we draw a line between the body and the image? So instead we might think about bodies and images as matter, as active, as in process or becoming, and in these relations with each other. And Deleuze argues that we should think about the image as matter. So not something hidden behind the image, but on the contrary, the absolute identity of the image and movement is matter. So then this raises the question then of how are images material? And how is the materiality of bodies constituted by images? I think one thing we can do is think about the ways in which images move us and how we become through images. So images are material and they are materialising. So bodies materialise through the relations they have with images. If we think about images as moving us, we can think about images as um, affecting us. So images as affective, they have affects. They make us feel certain things. So this is not so much about the impact or effect of images on the body, but it's a more kind of enmeshed understanding of um, images as affects. And if we're interested then in what images might make us feel or the kind of affective qualities of images, if we, if we kind of use a linguistic approach, we might miss some important aspects of what images do. Because we might very well be able to say, well, this image, I can decode it and it means this, the meaning of the image is this. And we might know that, but that might also miss how that image makes us feel, even if we know that. So it might miss the kind of the power or the lure of images. So we might move from asking what is an image or what is the meaning of an image to thinking what can an image do or what does an image do? So some questions then we might consider is how do bodies move us? What do they make us feel? And where is the line between bodies and images? And I thought what I'd do to um, kind of finish up was to give you some examples um, from my research about different ways in which we might kind of approach these questions or kind of try to kind of think with a new materialist approach. And the, the first example is from um, research I did with teenage girls in the early 2000s in the UK which was um, published as a, a book called The Becoming of Bodies. And part of that research, um, I interviewed teenage girls um, about images and what images were important to them. So a lot of the research at the time was focused on media images. And I thought, well, are they the only images that um, teenage girls are interested in? So I, I ask them, what do you think of when I say images? Um, and you have some responses here. So Hannah says, I think of other people's images, like celebrities, and then I think of myself and what I look like. And I ask, okay, so is that in comparison with media images? And Hannah says, sometimes, but I mean, I'm obviously not going to be like them, so I'm like myself, but I don't know my image. Faye says a lot of the stars and stuff, like the celebrities and all the pictures in magazines and stuff, and you just think that's the image of what I'm supposed to be, I think. And Emily says how you see yourself in the mirror, or sort of how you think other people see you. And you always see the bad side of you when everyone else is always saying, oh, you're really nice, you're really pretty and everything. And you're thinking, well, no, I know I'm not. So I think one thing here 
is that images mean or um, refer to different things for these um, uh, three girls. So we have media images, but we also have kind of um, images of, of myself, my image, um, looking in the mirror, um, how other people see you. So I think here, if we thought about images as representations that we could read and decode, we'd miss a lot of, I, I think, what the girls are kind of talking about here. When they're saying images are not kind of objects or they're not separate to their bodies, but their bodies, how they know their bodies, how they understand their bodies, how they experience their bodies, is kind of produced through these images that they're in relation with. So here, bodies and images aren't separate, but there's this kind of merging or becoming of the body through images. So if we wanted to kind of place a line between bodies and images, I think it would be quite difficult to do that here. So the body and the image aren't these separate entities, but they're in these relations of, of becoming. I think another um, uh, way of, of kind of thinking about this new materialist approach is to think about that idea about the body as this process um, uh, of transformation or becoming. So these are um, some adverts and some kind of motivational um, uh, kind of um, phase, phrases that are really um, prevalent in um, the UK at least. And this is the idea that, um, uh, so I think what these have in common is that they are about this kind of transformation, this self-transformation of the body. So in this first one, which is for um, a range of uh, gym clothes, it's I believe in the person I want to become. This one below, I will beat her, I will train harder, I will eat cleaner, I know her strengths, I've lost to her before, but not this time. She is going down, I have the advantage because I know her well. She is the old me. Again, so this idea of, of there being this kind of uh, self-transformation, the idea that the future of you is achievable and it's something you know that um, uh, it is, is kind of always there. So this kind of lure or ideal of a better future. And I think even um, with uh, lots of uh, campaigns around body diversity we can see this idea of still the need to kind of transform how you feel about your body. So stop thinking negatively about your bodies. Enhance your unique uh, qualities and love who you are. So there's still this need to kind of work on the self, even within these approaches which are, are meant to be about kind of accepting who you are. So here I think we can think about bodies as in this process of becoming, becoming better. And I think we need to kind of think critically about this idea of what's better. Um, but also the role of kind of visual culture and images. What role do they play? What role do they have in how the body uh, it is kind of um, affected? How the body kind of feels? How the body moves and changes? And um, a final example I wanted to talk about was um, uh, also from uh, that research with teenage girls that I talked about, where alongside interviews, I also um, worked with them in group sessions where they made images of their bodies. So one of the things I was interested in is there's this research on the images, and I kind of wanted to trouble this idea of uh, images as representations. 
And so I kind of wanted to involve images themselves as part of the research. So how, do, how might you research with people through images in order to understand what they think about, how they feel about images? So these were um, 13 and 14 year old girls. Uh, and I gave them a, a range of materials to select from. So uh, magazines, I gave them a Polaroid camera where they could um, take photographs of themselves. Uh, craft materials, makeup, and um, we were eating sweets as we were doing this, and sweet wrappers um, also became um, part of what they used. I gave them a roll of um, plain wallpaper, uh, which they could cut to any size that they wanted. And I asked them to make images of their bodies. So you, from this kind of range of materials, I asked them to think about, or, or kind of what I was interested in thinking about, is how might we understand these images as material, and how bodies are materialized through images. So these are two examples of, of what they produced. Um, the first one here by Faye, and the second one by Anna. I don't know whether you can see, but in the middle um, of the um, image is a Polaroid uh, picture of Faye. So she, she's placed herself in the middle um, of the, the artwork. And around herself, she's positioned um, various images from that she's cut out from magazines. And she's written, I wish, under her image. So there's the photograph of her, and then there's um, this uh, uh, kind of idea of how we should kind of think about these images in terms of here's herself and here's how she wishes um, uh, her body was. And I think most of these images we would uh, kind of think about as, um, uh, you know, in terms of this kind of ideal, slim, uh, white, attractive, um, celebrity body. So it's kind of very familiar, I think, from um, kind of visual culture. So if we think about these images in terms of um, the different materials um, that Faye has kind of selected to work with here, we can think about um, her own photograph and also these uh, magazine images. You also see there's some sweet wrappers um, at the, the, the top right hand side. We might also think about the way in which bodies are materialised through images then. So Faye here is kind of pointing to the way in which she um, sees herself as, as situated within this broader visual culture. So this also kind of maps onto um, some of what Faye was saying in the interviews as well. But it's a, it's a different method um, to try to kind of um, uh, get at some of these ideas. And I think it would be interesting if um, I hadn't given them magazine images, for example, and I'd just given them craft images, what kinds of um, images that they have produced. So you can think about the different kinds of materials um, that people work with. Um, the second image is um, from Anna. And what, what these um, reproductions here don't do is tell you the, the different sizes of the images. So Faye's, Faye's image is probably about this big, and Anna's is about this big. Um, so Anna worked with a very small um, piece of paper and she was also the only participant in the project to make an image of her actual body, so a recognisable human body here. So this is Anna's um, face, uh, head cut out from a Polaroid photograph um, on these, this body that she's created from magazine images and from craft materials. So there's, there's glitter and sand on them. And what 
what she's written here is that it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, even if you do look weird. It's what's inside that counts, meaning personality, no matter what you look like. So, Anna kind of didn't really kind of um, select the, uh, the magazine images to work with in the same way that, that Faye did. Instead, she kind of tries to position herself within this image. And kind of construct, I think she's thinking here about how she would kind of make or construct an image of her body that doesn't refer to, to kind of a, a wider visual culture. How do you construct a, a, an image of your body where it's what's inside that counts? And the kind of the difficulty of doing that. I think what I would also say is that um, one of the things that this method really kind of um, allowed was um, I think the participants to kind of think about this relationship between their bodies and visual culture in a different way. So um, sometimes there were overlaps between what they said in the interviews and what they did in these image making sessions, but there was also kind of something else happening in these, these art making, image making sessions. So the participants really enjoyed them. They stayed on through their lunch break to keep making um, the images. It was a really accessible and easy activity for them to do. And there was lots of talk amongst themselves while they were making. This wasn't always the case when I was um, interviewing them, where sometimes it was really hard to to kind of talk about um, uh, these kinds of issues. So the individual interviews I did with some of the, the girls were very short and we didn't really have we didn't really have much to talk about. And this was a, a very different kind of activity. So if we're thinking about kind of images in terms of affect and kind of what they do, we might need to think about um, uh, non-discursive methods for trying to kind of understand these kinds of issues. So these were done in 2003, so quite a long time ago, but I've been kind of trying to kind of think with and, and work with these methods um, more recently um, as a way of kind of developing a, a, a kind of a new materialist and an effective approach to, to bodies and images. So I think that was all I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to uh, say. Um, I've got uh, references uh, here, um, very tiny, but I'm happy to share the slides. I don't know if there's a way of um, uh, kind of circulating um, the slides. Uh, so yeah, three pages of, of, of references. And I'm um, okay to take questions if you have any. <laughs>